Good afternoon, Pace Linux viewers. Oh, that was really slow. Anyway, excuse me as I flip through my notes. Today we're going to be checking out scalar data. Uh, this is part two of my Perl series. Uh, I do want to say a few things about my last video. I talked about if there is a GUI interface for Perl. There is a TK module. I will not be looking into that today, but possibly in the future for sure. Uh, let's see what else. That's about it. I don't remember anything else from my last video that I want to bring up again. All right, so today we're going to be checking out scalar data. Scalar is the simplest kind of data. It's either numbers or strings. The string is a single scalar value. All right, so numbers. We'll go over that first. Numbers can be integers or floats or points. They are floating points, excuse me. Integers are whole numbers such as 20, 2011. You get the idea. Floating are 2.1, um, 2 times 10 to the 35. Floating points, laterals. Uh, lateral is a value that is represented in source code. Excuse me. Um, they are not the results of calculations. So it's going to be, you know, the 2 plus 2, not the 4. In that equation, um, integers. Integers are whole numbers. And an example that I would like to show you is let's do one million. That is one million, correct? This is one million. This is the same thing in Perl. One, two, three. One, two, three. Those are exactly the same thing. Uh, I believe that was installed to make Perl a little easier uh, whenever looking at numbers. Right. Also in scalar data, non-decimal integer laterals are also included, such as base 10, octal, hexadecimal, and binary. I won't be covering those today, but possibly in the future if it's a big demand. Um, numeric operators. So let's go into our Perl folder here, and I'm going to open up my software that edits my files, Vim in this case, and I'm going to open up opera dot pro it's just blank right now make sure you add this this first line here to tell that it is a pro uh, application script and we're going to do print two plus three and that's it that's simple correct we all know that's going to equal five now let's run in Perl and what does it do it equals five this is called a numeric operator since we are talking about scalars and strings, I shall show you something called a string operator. Numeric operators, string operators. You see right here, this is a single period. Period allows us to add in extra parts to our single line printout. So period, double quotes, new line. Now if we run this again, it allows us to print five and a new line. So it adds up over there. Another example of this is print hello dot, and let's put a space here, world. And I'll watch what happens. And I think I just, yeah, I do. Oh, okay, there it is. That was weird. All right, you see there? Prints the new world, and I forgot to put a new line. And see, it worked. That's great. Now, you saw that I put here double quotes instead of single quotes. Now, let's explore this if we change this to single quotes. And let's change that. I am not typing properly. What do you think will happen? Well, since I already typed it and I'm able to test it, look what happened. The new line still shows there. Why is that? That's because single quotes take up all characters enclosed in the single quote. So putting in this new line prints that it's actually a new line. Now, like I had before, if I change this to double quotes, it's going to do print it 
the way we want a program to print. And just to test to show that that works, it works. All right, so what does that mean double quotes are? Well, double quotes are variables inter, uh, interpolated, interpolated, excuse me, uh, variables within a string that can be replaced and reused. Now, that doesn't really make sense now, but that means that we can insert extra data inside a double quote, such as this new line, that single quotes can't. So let's let's do something here. Let's I, I talked about string operators a few minutes ago with the single period. Well, let's try and do string repetition, which is also a string operator. So if I type in print kite times three or two, excuse me, it's going to print kite twice. Now if I do this single quote this, put a number in front of this, and put a larger number in front of this, we will notice that Perl actually has automatic conversion between numbers and strings. Now watch what happens. See what it did here? Oh, wait, I forgot to multiply it. Change this x to multiplication. Uh, which is the asterisk sign. You see what happened there? It multiplied it by 6. I mean, it equals 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Now, wait a second. How does this work, right? Well, that's because of the automatic conversion. Now, because we are the programmers of this program script, we know that that's going to work. And most likely, people using our scripts are not going to look through the source. But if we did, not understand this and we wanted to you know test out our code there's this thing called the dash w which is a warning now if we save this again watch what happens whenever we post this this is that the argument 3 kite 79,000 or 100 isn't a numeric in multiplication at line 4 but because of the automatic conversion we don't have to worry about that so we could just delete this and now we don't have to worry about it in equals six. So that's it for the introduction to Scalar. Uh, I wanted to make this quick. It's got it's a, had a lot of data in it, um, not a lot of source here, but it did introduce you to a few little tricks and tips that you might not otherwise know from just looking at a script. So please enjoy this. Uh, please visit my website, pacelinux.com. I will be posting the manuscript of this video uh, um, up on there so you, if you have to reference this again it will be on my blog and I hope you're enjoying the tutorials if you find anything that you would like me to improve on please tell me if there's something that you like or whatever please comment that as well thank you